Hey y'all! Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Patrice. Please look around and if you enjoy that content, I would love it if you would choose to stick around by subscribing to my channel and also make sure that you hit the bell so that you are notified whenever I post new content. If you would like to interact with me and other amazing crafters, please find us on Facebook at Craftable Things. We would love to have you there. For my returning subscribers, hey y'all. So today's video, we are going to be using our Cricut machine and cutting this basswood. Now this is 1 16th of an inch basswood and we will be cutting this today using our Cricut maker and switching our blade out to the knife blade. This is not a quick project. This does take a few hours to get complete if you are using wood. This particular material, there are several times that this material has to be cut and that is how the machine is able to cut this wood. All right, so we are about to get started. Let's head on over to Cricut Design Space. We are going to set all of this up in Cricut Design Space using um, offset and slicing and welding and all types of things. Before we go though, I do want to let you guys know that I will be using a little bit of this Gorilla Glue. This is for wood when we get ready to piece our wood board together. So I'm super excited to show y'all how I do these boards. They are a big hit. They are perfect for gifts. They are perfect for your classrooms. If you are a teacher, I use these in my classrooms all the time and I enjoy making them and my students enjoy using them. All right, y'all, let's get started. Okay, so we have made it into Cricut Design Space and we are going to get ready to design our board so that we can cut it. Okay, so all you have to do is click onto shapes. We are just going to create the template that we need and the size of the wood that we have is a 12 by eight. So we are just going to unlock that and we are going to type in 12 inches in width and eight inches in height. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this. I'm only using this for the purpose of knowing how I want to place my, my lettering inside of the board, okay? Now and then I'm going to go to text and y'all, I usually like to create two of each thing just so that in case anything happens and I need to start over, I'll have the pieces that I need. All right, so I'm going to go to text and in text, the font that I want to use, it looks like it was already up, but I want to go over to filter and I want to select a multi-layer font those are usually easier to cut and i used to use this a lot before cricut introduced the offset option because now with the offset option you can use pretty much any font that you want that's a thicker font and you can just create a very very slight offset on that particular font or whatever it is that you're using the word and you'll be able to create your puzzles that way so i go to filters and then i'm just going to select multi-layer and that will select all of the fonts that are multi-layered fonts, okay? As you see here, multi-layer cutting writing, multi-layer cutting writing, so all of these are multi-layer fonts. And so because I'm doing this puzzle for a child, I am going to, I love the birthday bash font, and I also love, there's a Sesame Street font as well. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the birthday bash font. I think it's thick enough for me to use. And I am going to type the name here. Okay, the name we will be using is Trinity. And I am just going to go ahead and 
resize it how I want it to be. And I am going to make it a little bit longer. So as you can see, we're not using up a lot of the board. There's still a whole bunch down here. So you can either center this and do other things around. What I think I'm going to do is maybe center this at the top and maybe put some shapes at the bottom. I'm not sure, but this is what we are going to do. I just want to make it a little bit bigger. All right, so I am then going to, I think I want to kind of make the letters a little bit tighter. So I'm just going to bring it over just a little, and then I am going to increase the size a little bit more. All right, so now the size looks pretty good to me, and... As you see, I've selected the name because what I want you guys to pay attention over in the panel, remember we selected a multi-layer text. So this text has two layers already. So one we can see and the other we can't see, okay? And that's the one we want to go ahead and we want to make that one visible, okay? Because now we have our we have that offset, right? So what we're going to do is now that I've made that visible, I am going to select the text because this is still one piece of artwork. This is one font still. So we want to go ahead and we want to ungroup. So I am going to ungroup that. And so then I'm gonna select the inset of that text. And then I'm just going to move it down here. Okay, now that I have that down here, and I see this here, I think I need to move this down just a little bit. It's too close to the top for me. All right, and so now I am going to, and I think I'm gonna change this color too. So I'm just changing the color for the purpose of us changing the color to a brown to kind of give us a wood look. So we are going to then select the name and the square, and then we are going to slice it. So now that we have this sliced, we can go ahead and delete that. We want to delete the slice result. And if we go ahead and we put this back at the top, let's bring this to the front. This will fit into our puzzle piece perfectly. So next what I'm going to do is I just want to create, I like when I'm doing my puzzles, I kind of um, like to duplicate the text that we will be using because I want to be able to use two pieces of woods to make it a little bit thicker. All right, so next what I'm going to do is I was going to do a, a little bit like some shapes or so, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's see if we do a circle. And let's make an offset of that circle. See, that's too big. So we are going to have to make it really, really small. Even. Let's see if we do a point zero one. Maybe let's do a point zero two. Okay, so I think we're going to go with the point zero three. And I'm going to click apply. And so there we have that offset. And so we'll do the same thing that we did when we did the name. We are just going to move this circle. And we are going to, I think I'm going to move it up just a tad. And then we will be welding this not welding we will slice it okay and then I'm going to put a few more shapes here and just do that same method
Okay, y'all, so I'm all done with slicing these shapes into our wood template. And it looks pretty good to me. I do want you to know that same technique that I used for the shapes, you can use that for fonts also in case you're using a font that is not multi-layered. But for these types of puzzles, I do like for it to be thick because, or like a very, very bold font because with the knife blade and cutting that wood, it can be tricky if you are trying to cut very, very thin letters out. But this is what we have. I think I am going to insert some text here that we can possibly write with. And I think you are loved is always good. And I am going to just place this here, but I am definitely going to change the font. And I think I am going to use the I Love Glitter font. Okay, so now that we have the text, I want to add some glyphs, and those are the little squiggly lines and hearts. So I'm working in a Mac, and I will access my glyphs by going into the font application and just scrolling down and copying and pasting the glyphs that I want to use inside of Cricut Design Space. If you are using a PC, you want to check for your character maps. That's how you will find your glyphs. And now I am just setting this up. I will need to kind of make everything look more fluid. So I am going to ungroup everything that I have as far as this text is concerned so that I can manipulate those letters and move them around and move them a lot closer to each other. Now that everything is lined up, I want to select all of the text and then group it together. All right, so I am going to actually write this one. I want this to be a drawing. My color, I'm not sure. Let's go with the raspberry or very berry, berry raspberry all right so we will draw and then this is what it will kind of look like and then once we start putting our letters in we can go ahead and put in our shapes. Oh. We had it a different color, but it's that's still the same color, but it still looks great. I like to double check and make sure that all of the pieces will fit properly. And so I'm just double checking and making sure that everything fits and getting a visual of how everything will appear once this is finalized. All right, so we are going to get ready to make this we are all set we have our other our extra pieces so that we can have a thicker piece of wood and all we have to do is click make it all right y'all so we are pretty much ready to set this up for cutting i've moved all of the objects or the letters that i needed to move and we are ready to cut so i'm going to click continue today i will be using my cricut maker to get this done and in order for us to cut that basswood, we need to have the knife tool. If you are using a Cricut Explore Air, you need to be using the deep point blade to get this done. All right, so now we're going to just search for the material that we're, we're gonna be using, and we are using basswood. And we are using 1 16th of an inch. So we will select that. 
and as you guys see here it is asking for our knife blade because for the first board we will be cutting the basswood for the second board we will cut the chipboard to go behind it but for now we need to load in our basswood and i need to change the mat all right guys so now we are at the cricket maker and i just want to show you guys this is the chipboard that we will be using and this is just a puzzle that i did previously and i am going to use a piece of this basswood okay we're going to just lay it flat onto our board and you want to make sure that you are using the strong grip mat okay so this is an off-brand mat that i'm using cricut does have strong grip mats but it is very important that you use the strong grip mat with this particular project all right so i removed that cover and we are going to place this onto our mat And in addition, all even though we're putting this on the strong grip mat, you also still want to make sure you kind of push it into the mat. And you want to have some painter's tape or something that can hold it down, a tape. This is painter's tape, but if you have masking tape, you want to definitely use it. And I'm going to tape all of the edges down. This particular cut takes a little while to actually get complete. It's not a fast cut when you're cutting the wood. The knife blade goes through it several times. So if you are in a rush, this is not the project for you. I'll just make sure it's on there really nice and secure. So I'm just going around and just kind of making sure it's on there. I'm just gonna fold that under. All right guys, so then I need to change out the my fine point blade to the knife blade and this is what the knife blade looks like do not try to do this with your fine point blade you will ruin your blade and could possibly hurt your machine okay the fine point blade cannot cut into wood at all all right so i'm going to remove the fine point blade i'll just stick it here and we are going to put in our knife blade and you always want to make sure the housing wheels are faced this way because that is how it's turned. All right, and we are ready to go. Our light is blinking and we are ready to place our mat into our machine. All right, guys, so I ended up turning the board around because it, when I put it in, originally it started getting stuck, and I'm not sure if it's the board or if it, I had the tape too far around or what the case was. So I just went ahead and I removed the tape. I also made sure that I pushed most of the rollers to the side, and I was just playing around with it, just trying to see if I needed to, if I could just leave one, but I am going to go ahead and move all of the rollers to the right because there is no wood or anything here in this area. And let's see if that fixes the problem. So that was the problem. We are in business and we are about to cut this piece of basswood. 
this cut is going to take about an hour to get this all cut out and on your machine you'll notice that it will say how many passes that's required for the cut okay so the machine has stopped and it went 14 passes you want to make sure that it has cut completely through the wood honestly for these little wood pieces i usually have my hand vacuum just to vacuum it up but you want to kind of make sure that you can kind of lift your letters or whatever it is that you have i can see right here that it needs to be cut a little bit more there are places that i can just tell by eyeing it but if you want to double check it you can just release some of this tape and y'all this strong grip mat is nothing to be played around with but if you release if you lift it up and then you just pull that wood up you don't want to take it out of your board because if you need to cut it more all you have to do is press the button and i can tell it's not popping up popping out it's not it's not where it needs to be so i'm going to let this cut a little bit more it has already been cutting for a little bit over an hour and like i said if you are in a rush this is not the project to to make this is a project that requires a lot of time a lot of love and just a lot of patience okay so we are going to go ahead and put this back through and cut it and all you have to do is press your C for it to cut more. All right, y'all, so this went through about five more passes before I felt comfortable enough to take it out. So I am going to just use my my hand vacuum and get this out all right and i think this should be fine and if it's not i'm going to probably just use my exacto knife just to score the edges all right so now i'm going to remove the tape Right. I'm just going to peel the wood off. You want to kind of do it the same way you do everything else. And yeah, I probably could have went a few more times. Like that came out pretty good. But then you have this one that it's, uh, it needs a little bit of help. You see, you can still kind of see, you can see the line. But you probably can see it better that way. And so you can't even really see the scores. I thought that I had cut it enough, but I am going to have to take, these came out pretty good. But I am definitely going to have to do a little bit of cutting. As you can see, these cut out just fine. And so my plan is going to be to make them a little bit thicker. My plan is to put them together with a little bit of Gorilla Wood Glue to make it a thicker piece. All right, guys, so I have my X-Acto knife. And before I load the other board in, I am just going to go and trace I can see, and you see some of them, they are lifting up. I don't know if you see that. They are lifting up. So that makes it a lot easier for me to just find where that line is and just go with the line. So I could have put this in maybe for about three more passes, and I think it would have been just fine, but it's all good. All right, so for cutting of the board, I have to put in our pen. Just clamp it down. And I am pushing it a little bit because I tried to maximize the amount of space on the board. So we are going to see how this is going to go. It's usually best to make sure it's fully taped down. And I probably should put a few more pieces of tape on. All right. And we are going to get ready to slide this through. And then it will 
it will tell us how many passes, and it's probably going to be the same amount of passes, which was 14 for the letters. So we know that we'll probably have to let it go a few more times. Okay, so this is done and I ran it through about six times because I really didn't want to have to do too much of um, cutting it. And so we are going to take it out and usually when you take it out, you definitely want to check it, All right? So I am going to take this off of the mat and you see how the marker does, when you do this inside of Cricut and you take a text that is not a Cricut based text and you turn it into a draw option, this is usually what happens. So I'm just going to go through and just fill in that empty space with my marker. And I did, I don't know if, let me show you guys, when I told you that I was pushing it a little bit with the sizing. So just if you are doing one of these boards, just be careful with your sizing because you don't want it to go to the edge too much. But since I'm pasting this on top of another piece of board, I'm gonna use a chipboard. I'm okay with it. But I want you guys to see this is right at the edge. And you usually don't want that to happen. All right, y'all, let's see if this comes off how it should. And I do see some of those letters or the shapes are actually just popping out. That was pretty easy. That's really how you want it to come out. You don't want to have to do too much pulling and that sort of thing. But sometimes it's just, you can't avoid it sometimes. What this looks like, yep, it's all coming out. So I'm just going to turn this over and I am going to peel the mat away from the wood. All right, and as we said before, I know you guys see that, but I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to take the letters out. And these letters did not come out as easily as the, the shapes. Even the triangle doesn't appear to be coming out that easy. So I'm just going to give it a nice little pop. All right, before I take the letters out, which they look like they're going to be fairly easy to take out, I get rid of these little hanging parts. I am going to fill in the empty space to make that more thick. And I am just, you can use another black pen or a marker if you'd like. I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in with the Cricut pen. All right, guys, a slight detour. I decided that I wanted to put vinyl on top of the letters and not paint them with the acrylic paint. So I need to create a, an inset of the name. So I'm going to go ahead and hide everything that I don't need for this cut. And I am then going to select the name and head up to our offset button at the top. So instead of doing an offset, offset is the outline. And as you see that outline around the letters, the inset will actually go inside of the letters. Okay, so that's how the outline will be. It will not be outlined around. It would be outlined inside. And so I am going to reduce it. Instead of going to the right on the offset line, I'm going to go to the left to create an inside or inset of each of those letters okay and so of course I want sharp edges that's why I clicked the right angle and here we have our inset and I just need to go ahead and get rid of the original text because I am only going to cut out our inset so that we can place that on top all right guys so now everything is cut out our board is cut out and a piece did break, but I'm going to glue this back on. 
And now I have to decide whether or not I want this to go on top of another board and just glue it down or if I want to place it on top of this chipboard. And I think this is the route that I am going to go for this particular puzzle. This is a puzzle that I did before. I did this puzzle about two years ago and I just painted the pieces. And also underneath the top layer of wood, I put dry erase magnetic um, paper. Well, it's a dry erase magnetic piece of like a, a, a small board underneath so that way the letters would not get lost and they would just stick here. And also you can write on this with a dry erase marker. So you can give this to someone, a little child who is learning how to write their name and they can trace this with dry erase and it erases. So that is why I did it that way. But this one, we are just, this is going to be more so decorative. And we are going to layer this with a little bit of vinyl. Also, I am keeping the letters that were cut out from this wood, from the wood board. And these I'm going to keep and maybe turn into something else. So now we will get ready to put our puzzle together and I will be using Gorilla Glue's wood glue version of their glue and this works pretty good. I will also be using these wood clamps to get a tight, to make sure that wood uh, sticks very tightly to the backing. And I'm just going to brush the glue onto the back. I want to make sure that I get those edges really, really good. And I need to make sure that part is nicely pressed down into the board because I don't want it lifting. I am also going to apply glue to the lettering and make sure that those are stick together because I do want that to be a little thicker than the, the wood. That's why I cut out two pieces of wood for the, the name. It is very important that you get the inside of the board around the letter so that it does not lift. Okay, so I'm all done and I'm just going to place this on top of that chipboard and I am going to press it down and just clean out any of the glue that might have um, gone onto the board. Also, I will then take the wood clamps and place those. I definitely want to place those around the edges and in those corners just to make sure that it's clamped really, really tightly. So I'll place a few of these around. It may not take that much clamping, but I like to make sure. And I definitely want to get that little piece right there where it's broken off a little bit. So I'm going to let this dry for about 20 to 30 minutes and then I will get started with gluing the letters together. So now I'm ready to glue the letters together and if you have any edges that are maybe sharp or some of the wood is still attached, you can take your sander and your sanding block or sanding paper and just sand around it after you have glued it together so that your edges can be smooth. However, right now I am just going to glue each of these letters together and I am going to set them aside and let them dry. This glue takes about 24 hours for it to be fully, fully cured. Um, so just know that before giving it away. So I'm done gluing the letters together and now I am going to work on the board just a little. I want to get the dots and I just want to make sure that I glue the dots onto the main board because when your those pieces are so small and I don't want them to get lost they will be the first to get lost as I just figure it's better just for us to go ahead and glue the dots onto the board so that's what I'm doing now I will glue all three dots onto the board next I'm going to glue that broken piece back onto the board I'm just going to use the same thing wood glue 
and glue this on. After I have glued it down, I just want to make sure that the letter fits properly into the slot. So that way I can remove that piece if I need to, to make sure that it fits correctly. But right now I'm just making sure every inch of this piece has glue on it because I know it is going to be fragile, but once it's on the board, it is perfectly fine. Now it is time for me to weed the vinyl and I am just going to weed this vinyl so that I can get ready to place it onto the shapes and the letters. And now I'm just using standard grip transfer tape and I am going to place the vinyl onto the shapes first. And as you'll see, there's a little bit left around that edge. That's why I did an inset of the actual shape and letter because I want to apply Mod Podge on top just to kind of seal it on. I didn't want anything on the edge of the wood. So I just wanted to do it that way. Now I am going to get ready to cut these letters out and transfer these letters onto the wood. All right, y'all, so I'm all done with putting the vinyl onto the letters and the shapes. And to seal this, you can put a little bit of Mod Podge. I'd probably go over each letter and shape twice with the Mod Podge. Three times is even better, but you could put the Mod Podge on just to seal the vinyl onto the wooden letters. But for the most part, we are all done. Now, if you wanted to, you could definitely paint the board. You could bling out the board, like how I kind of like, this isn't really blinged out, but I put a little bit of rhinestone. You could do so many different things with the board. I do feel like two pieces of actual wood makes it sturdy, as opposed to using the chipboard, but the chipboard does work just fine. And I am just going to put this puzzle together and even this part right here is not too bad and we are all done and this is our puzzle this is what we did with this piece of basswood from Amazon I will have the link to everything that I used in the description also be on the lookout i may make another video using these leftover pieces of wood because they are perfectly usable and why waste them if we could use it for something else but that's it for today guys thank you all so much for watching until next time